Yo, what is good everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get every single reward from the City of Neon in the quickest way possible without spoiling the story. There is honestly a mind-blowing amount of awesome rewards and content located just in this one city that will really enhance the rest of your playthrough. This includes 10 skill magazines, 7 bonus magazines, 7 unique weapons, an epic sword, 3 followers, 2 housing units, a ship, tons of exclusive apparel, extremely powerful chems, the ultimate social skill to control NPCs through manipulation, and the ability to create the drug Aurora yourself. So if you've already been to Neon City, this guide will ensure you didn't miss anything. And if you haven't been to Neon yet, this guide will allow you to enter as a simple captain and quickly ascend into a legendary corporate gangster with mind control abilities and the chemistry skills of Walter White. I know we're all here for the adventure, so this is not a quest walkthrough, although I will show you exactly where every quest begins and which ones lead into important quest chains so that you can prioritize your time and efforts. That being said, there are a couple quest bugs and important decisions that influence reward outcomes that I will cover in the final section on quests, but I will do it in a way that reveals as little about the story as possible. Real quick, before we get started, I just want to thank everyone for all the love on the last Starfield video and welcome all the new captains to the crew. My goal is to bring you many more videos both on Starfield and other games that are hopefully equally valuable to your gaming experience. Alright, let's dive into the City of Neon. First, we'll quickly discuss the layout of Neon as navigating the city can be quite confusing at first and you'll need to understand the layout to quickly access all the items. So once you cross the bridge from the spaceport and enter the city, you'll find yourself in the core of Neon, also known as Bayou Plaza or the Akuthi Market. This is the hub of commerce and tourism in the city and features all different kinds of shops and accommodations. At the far left side of where you enter the spaceport, you'll find Ryujin Industries Tower, home to operations as well as sales offices for their three subsidiaries. This is where the main quest line for Neon kicks off with an interview. Opposite this, at the far right of the plaza, you'll find the Trade Tower, home to the Astral Lounge, the only legal location in the settled systems to buy the drug Aurora, as well as offices for the megacorps that operate on Neon and the penthouse of Administrator Bayou himself. All of this is built on what is known as the Upper Platform. There are several entrances from the core that lead to the outer ring of the Upper Platform, which is known as Ebside. This is essentially the slums of Neon where most of the gang activity is located. You'll find that several people in the core need help that will lead you into Ebside. Ebside is kind of a clusterfuck, so I usually navigate through the core to access the different parts of Ebside, but you can find maintenance access stairs throughout Ebside that will take you to the rooftops of the city, where you can cross over and several small treasures can be found up there, two of which are through these breakable doors. The final area of Neon is known as the Underbelly, and this is essentially the industrial hub located under the core. This is essentially just a big rectangle where Xenofresh Fisheries, the producers of Aurora, is located on one side, and Jennerdyne, who designed the city's cutting-edge power grid that harnesses lightning, is on the other. Now that you understand the layout, let's talk about the locations of key items you don't want to miss. The most important of these items are skill magazines, which unlock new crafting recipes and permanent passive stat bonuses to your character. There are 10 magazines available in Neon, 8 of which are accessible right away, and 2 of which are locked behind quest progression. There are also seven magazines located off-world that you will be able to access during different parts of the Ryujin questline. So the very first one you're going to want to grab is right when you enter the city. If you turn left, you will see the Free Stars Ranger building. If you go in there, up the stairs, and into the bedroom, you will see a magazine on the end table to the right of the bed. And this is going to be Gunslinger's Guide number 4, which will allow you to permanently reload and draw Laredo weapons 5% faster. The next one's going to be in the Voli Hotel, so if you go out of the Free Star Rangers building or out of the spaceport and turn right, just a couple buildings down, you will see the Voli Hotel. You're going to have to rent a room for at least a night to access this one. And if you go up into your room through the elevator, you will see this sitting on a coffee table to the right just as you enter the room. This is going to be Cyber Runner Cypher number 4, which makes laser weapons permanently do 5% more critical damage. Pretty rad. You'll find the next four in the Trade Tower. So if you go out of the Voli Hotel or out of the Spaceport and hook a right all the way down on that side, past the Statue of Bayou into the Trade Tower, right when you enter to the right, you will see an elevator where you can access all of the Mega Corps that are located in the Trade Tower. So if you head to that elevator, there are gonna be three up there. So the first one's going to be at Kelt Corp. So if you go to the Kelt Corp level, past the receptionist all the way to the back right of the office, you'll see a couch and on the arm of that couch, you'll see Neon Knights number three which permanently grants the recipe for the Chem O2 shot, which basically gives you instant O2 recovery at 500% for two seconds. We're gonna get more into the details of these pharmaceuticals in the Chem section, so this is just where to find the recipes right now. Okay, so the next one's gonna be accessed from the same elevator except going to the Xenofresh headquarters, and here in the lobby to the right under this wonky looking painting, you will see Neon Knights number five, and this is gonna grant the recipe for Adajack, which suppresses addiction penalties and grants big bonuses to researching for 15 minutes. 
heading back to the same elevator and going up to the Slayton engineering office. If you walk out into the main lobby to the left of the receptionist, you'll see some coffee tables on that first coffee table to the right. You will see cyber runner cipher number one, which is going to give you an additional bankable auto attempt when hacking. Okay, so the fourth one is still in the trade tower, but actually in the Astro Lounge. So you're gonna go all the way down this elevator back to the lobby of the trade tower, and then go up the big stairs to the Astro Lounge. Once you enter the lounge to the left, you'll see a VIP elevator. If you take that elevator up, hook a right directly out of the elevator and then take your first right after that, you will be in VIP booth number one. And right on the little club table in here, you will see Neon Knights number two. And this is going to grant the recipe for the Chem Steve, which is an insane chem actually, basically a super powered version of Aurora that not only slows time, but also give you 40% range damage and 50% weapon accuracy for 10 seconds. Okay, so the final two that you can grab right away that aren't locked behind quest progression, are in the Seokaga Syndicate hideout. And this is going to be accessed from the roof of Frankie's, uh, which is basically a little convenience store in Ebside. So if you enter Ebside from this access point from the core and hook an immediate left, you're gonna see some stairs. This will start to take you up to the rooftops and Frankie's is going to be uh, the building just to the right as you get up the stairs. And so it's like right on the edge of the city. And if you loop around, you will see uh, a vent that you can lock pick and gain access to the Siyokuga hideout. And this is a novice lock, so you shouldn't need any points in lock picking to be able to pick this. There is a quest eventually during the Ryujin Industries quest line that will lead you into this hideout, but it's pretty deep in the quest line. And so if you wanna grab them right away, you can just pick this lock and sneak in. And once you're in, they really don't give a shit if you're in there. I thought they were gonna be hostile, but uh, they don't really care and they don't care if you take their magazine so you can kind of just wander around there's also a bunch of crazy shit to steal in here including a couple insane weapons um, that we'll talk about in the stealing section so the first one's going to be in the very first room when you drop down the vent right as you enter in front of you on the coffee table you will see grunt number two and this is going to give you five percent more critical damage to ballistic weapons Upstairs on the second floor, you're gonna have to go through a couple hallways, but you'll see like a big glass tree and past that tree down the hallway, uh, you will see a room with two closed doors. And if you enter the left door uh, right in front of you to the right of the bunk bed on the little counter, you will see Combatech catalog number one, which is going to slightly increase the range and accuracy of Combatech weapons. Okay, so those are the eight you're going to be able to find right away. Uh, the last two are going to be locked behind quest progression. And the first one of those is going to be uh, about six or seven quests into the Ryujin Industries quest line. You will gain access to the executive floor of that tower, uh, which is in the same elevator as you go up to the operations floor on. And uh, once you get to that floor, if you go up the stairs uh, all the way to the right of the second floor, you will see uh, the office of Alexis Price. In her office, when you enter to the right on a little side table, you will see Neon Knights number one. And this is gonna permanently grant the recipe for the Chem Battle Up, which is another really strong one that gives 40% range damage, 25% weapon accuracy, and 300 damage resistance for three minutes. The final magazine is the only one I haven't gotten yet and is actually located in the only room I haven't been in in the whole city of Neon and that is down in the Jennerdyne Industries building. And that's because it's part of a quest line that starts outside of the city. So it's actually part of the Crimson Fleet Pirate quest line. And the quest is apparently called Absolute Power, uh, but that's where you're going to actually get access to this room, this big R&D room in the back of Jennerdyne Industries down in the underbelly. And I'm looking through the window here, but somewhere in here, when you're on that quest, you will be able to find the final Neon Knights issue, which is number four. And that's going to permanently grant the recipe for the chem red amp which is basically a combination of red trench and amp also an insanely strong one so you're gonna get 50 percent melee damage 50 percent movement speed two times jump height and 400 damage resistance for two minutes okay guys this video is already going to be super long so rather than show each off-world magazine individually like i just did for the 10 on neon i'm just going to show this list of where they are at and what quests end up taking you to them so feel free to pause the video here and maybe take a quick screenshot of this list to reference as you progress through the region quest line so those are all the magazines available now let's take a look at weapons there are a total of seven unique weapons available throughout neon and its quests most of which are actually really solid weapon options. I've been using these weapons around level 36 on very hard, and most of them still perform very well in the right situations. So if you're able to pick these up earlier in your playthrough, they will absolutely dominate. The only one that feels a bit weaker to me is the buzz cut, and that is reflected in the price. 
Five are available for purchase from vendors throughout the city. The sixth is picked up during the quest Top Secrets during the region quest line, but you must take Simon's side job when you meet him in Sidonia. And the seventh is the final reward from completing the gang quest line in Neon. We'll look at exactly how to get each one, how much they cost, and I'll show clips of me using them so you can get a feel for how they shoot. Okay, so the first two are going to be available from Frank Rennick in Neon Tactical, and these are the shoddy shotgun called Boom Boom uh, and the Grendel called the Buzz Cut. So Boom Boom is a unique uh, shoddy shotgun and it's going to cost 18,000 credits, but it has this really cool effect where you get these explosive rounds. And this weapon is actually OP. It just completely decimates stuff when you get that explosion proc and it shoots really fast. You can just unload and everything just explodes. So really satisfying weapon to use. I think uh, very worth picking up if you're not already deeper into endgame. And the second one is going to be the buzz cut, which is available for 4,500 credits and has a lot of cool mods with the main effect being uh, this 25% increased attack speed. But because it's just a basic Grendel, the base damage is not super high. Uh, and so it's gonna be much better earlier on in your playthrough. You can see me shooting guys and it actually takes a couple clips to chunk through guys, uh, even lower level guys on very hard. So definitely more of an early game weapon and that's reflected in the price, I think. The third one is going to be available in the bottom floor of the Ryujin Industries Tower from a gentleman named Ken Bright, who is an ex Freestar Ranger, now running this Arbor on Storefront, which is a subsidiary of Ryujin. And if you talk to him, you're going to be able to acquire the Spacer. And this costs just a bit over 15,000 credits and is a particle beam pistol uh, that is meant to be used in space as it has the space add up perk that gives you a 30% damage bonus while in space, but 15% reduced damage when using it on the ground. And this one actually really surprised me with how hard it hits when you are fighting stuff in space. So really good for, uh, you know, ship entries when you're boarding ships to just bring people down. Just sort of a really cool situational space pistol for blasting stuff in space. All right, so the final two are Mine Tear and Poison Storm, which are the most powerful and also most expensive weapons available. And they will be in the Trade Tower up that same elevator that takes you to all the corporate offices. If you go to the Core Kinetics office, you will meet Matthias Durant, Press Core Kinetics three. Salesman of the okay. Year, and he will have both these weapons available for you. What? Mine Tear is a Mag Shear rifle available for just under 50,000 credits with depleted uranium rounds, uh, with the main effect being Frenzy. Honestly, I still have no idea what this Frenzy perk does even though I've been trying my best to find out. I can't find any accurate information online and I thought based on the name that it might make enemies like turn and attack their allies because they're frenzied but I haven't seen that happen yet. Maybe because everything just dies too quickly even on very hard because of how powerful the rifle is but if anyone actually knows for sure what frenzy does we would all love to see that in the comments. And the final one is Poison Storm which is a rare mag heavy and this is also going to have depleted uranium rounds and has the poison perk, which gives a chance to slow and damage enemies. And this one's going to be available for just over 46,000 credits. Now, both these weapons feel extremely powerful. The main downside is how expensive the ammo is. So both of them are going to shoot this 50 caliber MI ammo, uh, also sold by Matthias Durant here in Core Kinetics. So just to give you an idea of the price, 265 rounds is gonna be just over 10,000 credits. And so uh, you can really churn through credits quickly using these guns. They both shoot really fast as well. And so they're super dope, uh, but pretty pricey if you're just letting them rip. So keep that in mind. Ember is a really cool, unique laser pistol with ignition beams that light enemies on fire and actually does pretty solid damage, especially with the extra burn effect. Ember is available when you travel to Sidonia on Mars for the region quest called Top Secrets. This one is easy to miss because you must take Simon's side job in order to access it. He will send you after a woman who has Ember who will either give it to you with successful persuasion or you can kill her for it. If you do end up taking her out, you'll also gain access to her unique ship called the Datura. This is a class A ship, so nothing crazy, but definitely would be good early on in a playthrough and has the potential to be upgraded into a cooler ship or sold for a small profit. The final unique weapon available is called Street Sweeper, which is a Kraken automatic pistol that has the lacerate effect, which randomly applies a bleed effect to the target. The really high fire rate on this gun will allow this lacerate effect to proc quite often. I haven't got to test this one out too much yet since I just acquired it, but it seems pretty rad and definitely looks like a gangster weapon. This is rewarded for completing the final quest of the gang quest line, which initially begins with a quest called the Audition from a gentleman named Digger Zaman, who is hanging out right when you enter Ebside by Madame Savages. Now there's a really cool bonus weapon that is technically not unique, but might as well be because it's an epic sword that you can steal from the Seoka hideout called the Syndicate Enforcer. This is a Wakazashi sword with two great perks for melee. 
Berserker, which does more damage the less armor the target has, and Lacerate, which randomly applies a bleed effect to the target. It also looks super dope, and it's basically a ninja sword, so come on. You'll end up hearing me say this a couple times in the video because it's relevant for a couple different sections, but it's really important. So just be sure to sneak in from the roof of Frankie's and scope out the Sayoka hideout for anything you want to steal, including this sword, before starting the Guilty Party's quest for Ryujin, because the sword was there when I snuck in before the Guilty Party's quest, but I didn't grab it, and then when I went in for the Guilty Party's quest, it was gone. So I actually had to go way back to a previous save and redo everything to acquire this. If you're looking for additional weapons, there are a bunch scattered around Neon, including a few to steal in the security office, and almost every office in the Ryujin Tower and the Trade Tower have a safe somewhere that can be lockpicked and usually contain a weapon, some ammo, and some creds. This also includes a safe in Benjamin Bayou's penthouse that had this cool little James Bond pistol in it for me, and a safe behind Masako, the CEO of Ryujin Industries, which had the best old earth weapon I've found so far, a refined modded sniper rifle. Be sure to occasionally check the weapons vendors in town where you got the other unique weapons for randomly spawning guns that can be quite good, as well as the striker of vendor course. in Madame Savage's that unlocks during the gang quest line, who actually had the very first version of this dope pistol that I had seen. It might have been because I had just hit level 40, but I also found my very first rocket launcher called the Negotiator in a weapon crate on Carine during the key ingredient quest for Ryujin right when I landed at the mining facility, and also my first Varun pain blade from one of the ecliptic I killed inside. Now one of the coolest things about Neon is all the really strong and dope apparel available throughout the city and story, which includes nightlife clothes for the club, corporate suits, and outfits that are literally gangsta. You'll also obtain a superfly suit with double the normal persuasion chance somewhere in the middle of the region questline, and potentially one of the best and sickest looking apparels in the game towards the very end of the region questline, which gives you a 25% bonus to stealth. The most notable apparel besides these are the gang outfits you can acquire. Not only do these look really sick, but also give you an additional 5% crit damage, so our very strong combat apparel, whereas the region apparel is focused on persuasion and subterfuge. All right, so taking a look at where to get the gangsta garb, the striker's outfit is obtained during the gang quest line, which as we mentioned, starts with the quest called the addition from Digger Zayman, who is hanging out right when you enter Ebside by Madame Savages. The disciple's outfit can be looted off of Warlord's dead body, who you'll encounter during the bare metal side quest given by Frank Rennick in Neon Tactical, who is the same gentleman that sells the unique weapons Boom Boom and the Buzz Cut. You can also get a color variation of this later on when killing disciples during the what gang quest line with the strikers. Finally, the Sayoka outfits can be looted from gang members during the Guilty Parties quest if you end up denying Bayu's favor and they are all hostile to you. More on this in the quest section. A neon security suit is also available to steal in the lockers of the security office if you want to go undercover, and this allows you to operate under the guise of security not just on neon but also anywhere else in the settled systems. This is also a bit unique as it gives a plus 5% intimidation chance, which is a skill that could be trained in the social tree. There's also some gun racks downstairs in the same building that you can steal if you wanna. Finally, there is a Ryujin lab worker outfit that you can steal out of these lockers in the main R&D room during the background checks quest from the Ryujin quest line that gives a plus 5% chance of sudden developments during research. In addition, there are all different kinds of suits available for fashion from a few of the vendors in Neon most of which give a plus 5% persuasion chance. You can find all the different kinds from the three main apparel vendors, which are Sieghearts Outfitters, New Wills Goods, or Ato at the Neuroamp shop in the Ryujin Trade Tower. In addition, they have all different kinds of nightlife clothes available for frequenting the Astral Lounge. Another unique thing about Neon is you'll have access to many different kinds of neuroamps, which are headgear apparel that actually give a stat boost to social skills as compared to most apparel headgear that is simply cosmetic. Neuroamps are available for purchase at the same three vendors that sell the suits. Ato in Ryujin Tower has the widest selection, and these give bonuses to several of the different social skills that can be developed in the skill tree. Near the climax of the Ryujin Industries questline, you will gain access to an internal neuroamp permanently installed in your brain, which is one of the best quest rewards available in the game because it gives you a permanent rank of the manipulation skill without having to invest any other points into social skills. This will allow you to click on NPCs and command them to take an action with a very high success rate. You can also stack it with another external neuroamp you purchase and wear. 
While we're talking about vendors, it's worth mentioning real quick that these same vendors often have decent sized stacks of structural material available for building chests. And Saburo Okadigbo in the Mining League will occasionally have titanium available, which is used to build the warehouse storage containers used to store manufactured components at your outposts. And finally, most of them sell Chasmbas oil, which is one of the ingredients required to make Aurora. Speaking of Aurora, another awesome thing about Neon is the amount of new chems available exclusive to Neon City, all of which you can learn to craft yourself through quests or magazines. There are also a few types of drinks exclusive to Neon worth considering. Let's start with Aurora, the premier drug of Neon and the reason the city was founded. The Astral Lounge in the Trade Tower is the only legal place to acquire Aurora in all of the settled systems. And if you go in the Astral Lounge all the way to the back, the bartender named Boone Morgan has this available for 760 creds a pop. Now the utility of this drug is it slows time by 40% for 10 seconds. And so basically just a really cool combat drug to uh, let you go matrix mode. The only other place you can actually buy Aurora is in the Euphorica Members Lounge. So if you access Euphorica through Ebside, and talk to the owner for 5,000 credits, you can get access to the members lounge. And this is sort of an under the table uh, spot where Aurora is available for the same price. And it's sort of marketed as the chill spot to do Aurora versus, uh, you know, raving in the club. So one of the main things to keep in mind with Aurora is it is contraband. So it will be scanned for anytime you enter uh, a settled systems territory. Also, if you have it in your inventory in Neon, you will not be able to fast travel with it. Uh, you'll get this little air you also won't be able to take it through the spaceport exit through the main gate because Neon Security has the scanner set up to scan for it and they will try to arrest you if you do so. But if you want to take Aurora out of Neon, this is easily avoidable if you just jump off of Ebside. Uh, so if you go to where the purchasable sleep crate is, which I will show you in the housing section, uh, and you run past the elevator and hop off right there, you can just boost pack your way all the way over to the landing pad and skip the scanners and everything, hop on your ship, and then you're good to go with your Aurora. There's also a shorter, similar hop down from Underbelly onto the top of the little pathway. Now keep in mind that Aurora is a drug, and so just a couple uses, you will start to see these addiction symptoms, which can be uh, pretty brutal. But keep in mind, there are some other chems that suppress addiction symptoms. And remember, you can always get these fully cured by visiting a doctor at a medical okay. facility, such as Reliant Medical in Neon and paying a small fee. Finally, you can learn to craft the drug Aurora yourself if you follow uh, the quest chain that begins right when you get to the city, right when you enter, you will see a gentleman being arrested for trying to smuggle Aurora out. If you go talk to him in the security office, he'll have you go talk to Yannick Legrand over at Legrand's Liquor. And this is the quest line that is going to end in you being able to create the drug Aurora yourself. And the materials for this are going to be one chasm bass oil, one benzene, two hallucinogen, and one stimulant. Like we mentioned earlier, you can purchase extra chasm bass oil from many of the vendors in town and can also scoop some extra supplies during every shift you work at Xenofresh if you sacrifice the performance bonus. Additionally, after completing the quest line to make Aurora yourself, you'll randomly get activity notifications after some in-game time passes for an activity quest to go back to Yannick for another shift at Xenofresh, which is a quick chance to make some extra creds or get some extra supplies for making your own Aurora. So we already pretty much covered the other chems in the magazine section. So here I'll just show each chem's effects and the ingredients needed to make them so you can keep an eye out for these materials during your adventures. Feel free to pause the video here and maybe take a screenshot so that you can reference this list later. All right, now let's talk about drinks. Blend, man. Blend is dope because it's basically a slightly weaker version of Aurora mixed with an alcohol buff for damage resistance, but the biggest upside is it's not considered contraband and is half the price. This means you can stock up on it at Legrand's Liquor and carry it around without worrying about getting scanned or taking it out of neon. I haven't fully tested this, but it might not have the addiction side effects either. If you want to try a can of blend for free, start the awesome interaction with your new buddy Miguel in the Voli Hotel lobby and suggest he try some for himself. You'll then find him in Legrand's Liquor where he gives you his. Okay, moving on to other unique drinks. Velocity is a very pretty drink available in different colors made from the plant life on Madame Sauvage's home planet. They are available for purchase from her directly with some that can be stolen scattered throughout the bar. Chimera is another unique drink available only in the Euphorica bar in Ebside and has pretty much the same effects as Velocity, basically just a beefed up cocktail. There are also a few drinks available at both bars and the Astro Lounge that are valued higher for their decorative quality. So if you're looking to put some bottles out in your Sky Suite to look nice, these would do the trick. All right, now let's talk about stealing and contraband. 
There's actually so much stuff available to steal here, it's kind of crazy, so I'm just going to cover some of the biggest chunks that will give you the most bang for your buck. You'll really want to have max level lock picking as there are many locks of varying difficulty, as well as at least rank one of pickpocketing if you want to access Bayou's penthouse. An important thing to remember real quick is that you can easily launder all your stolen items at the Trade Authority. Simply sell everything that is marked as stolen, then switch over to the buyback tab which lets you buy everything back at the same price, except now it won't be considered stolen. Be careful not to accidentally exit out of the trade window as this will reset the buyback option. Okay, there are two massive contraband locations in Neon that contain 12 to 15 pieces of contraband, totaling around 15 to 20k credits once sold. The first is in the security office right where you will end up if you get caught stealing. Both times I got caught stealing, I actually gained a big profit because I just took all my stuff back by picking the lock on the confiscated chest, and then right next to it there's this big contraband chest that I stealth looted real quick right at the same time. The other big contraband chest is behind a master lock door on the second level of the Sayoka hideout. And interestingly enough, both of these chests seem to respawn over time, where if you check back later after a significant amount of game time has passed, they should be full again. I've scooped the security chest twice and the Sayoka chest three times. I looted all the contraband when I was first in there finding the magazines, then again when I went back in to get the sword right before I did the Guilty Parties quest, and then when I re-entered shortly after this, during the Guilty Parties quest, the chest was full yet again. And then finally for contraband, Madame Sauvages has some stolen artwork in the locker directly to the left of the back room behind the bar, as well as a shitload of wine back there that could be stolen, and more in the hallway leading up to the striker's room upstairs. Similar to Madame Sauvages, the VIP booths on the second floor of the Astral Lounge have a bunch of different liquor, food, and decorations available for the nabbing. Additionally, almost every single office in the Ryujin Tower and the Trade Tower have a safe somewhere that can be lockpicked and usually contain a weapon, some ammo, and some creds. Now, if there's anything you want to steal on the operations, subsidiary, R&D, or executive levels of the Ryujin Tower, you can do it during the background checks quest where the building is evacuated except for security. This is also a good time to pickpocket some guards if you're into that. If you use the EM weapon given you by Dalton to stun the guards, you can actually scoop up their guns as well. You can also pickpocket them while they're on the ground stunned if you stealth real quick. The main unique thing I found here was the Ryujin lab worker outfit on the R&D level mentioned in the apparel section. Okay, we've mentioned the Sayoka hideout a couple times, now let's talk about it a little more in depth. So there is a ton of cool stuff to steal in here, including this epic sword called the Syndicate Enforcer, but there's also a bunch of weapons on racks right by this sword and the massive contraband chest that we mentioned earlier. I know I'm repeating myself now, but you'll want to make sure you steal anything you want out of here before you begin the Guilty Parties quest. Finally, there's also several standard Galbank ATMs in the location right next to the trade tower that can be lockpicked, totaling just under 10k creds. The final location worth checking out for stealing shit is Benjamin Bayou's penthouse. Now this can only be accessed if you drop at least one skill point into theft because you'll need to pickpocket Bayou in the Astro Lounge in order to get his keycard. The most notable thing you'll find in here besides some cool looking decorations is the hidden activity from the book on his desk called The Price of Destiny. He also has a safe which will likely have a pretty rad weapon in it. Note that there is a bug that doesn't allow you to go back down the elevator because it is restricted still, so to go back down you will need to fast travel out of there. So make sure you're not over encumbered like me and have some room in your inventory to carry stuff before you go up. I actually had to drop all my guns, fast travel out, and come back for them all. It was kind of ridiculous, but it worked. All right, now let's quickly talk about followers. There are three named followers available in Neon City, one at each of the bar locations. So in Madame Sauvages, you will find Sophia Grace, who is actually a disciple looking to get out of Neon City that has a pretty cool story, and the skills she offers are stealth and lasers, so really more of a subterfuge and combat companion. You'll find Danny Garcia located in the Euphorica Bar in Ebside, and their skills are chemistry, robotics, and energy weapon systems. Finally, you can find Mickey Caviar, supposedly a famous chef, although I've never heard of him, located in the Astral Lounge and pretty hammered. His skills are gastronomy, wellness, and incapacitation. Just like most other named followers, you can negotiate their salary price down to half uh, if you succeed on the persuasion, and so it might be worth popping a Hippolyta uh, before talking to these people to increase the chance of success. 
Okay, so as far as housing goes, Neon offers two options that really hit opposite ends of the income scale. So the first is a sleep crate that's quite literally just a box, literally a crate. And I actually picked this up right away just so I could put a chest in there to quick stash my Aurora and Contraband to give me the ability to quick travel out of Neon if I wanted to. But it's definitely not necessary as this sleep crate is located uh, very close to the jump to your ship uh, that I was referencing in the Contraband section. So this sleep crate's available for 6,500 credits. Uh, from the sleep crate vendor, which is actually on the opposite side of website for some reason. And then the other housing unit available is the Skyrise Suite. And this, I think, is probably one of the most expensive places you can buy in the game. And I don't have the credits right now to buy this, but uh, when I do eventually acquire it, I'll try to make a separate video showcasing the interior uh, so you guys can get a feel for what you're paying for. The Sky Suite features an open design with an emphasis on luxury. Whether you prefer the morning sky or a neon sunrise, the high ceilings and wall-sized windows will give you a full view of the city's splendor. This one is available for purchase from Boone Morgan, the barkeep in the back of the Astro Lounge, for 235,000 credits. Now there is a building that is sort of misleading called Ryujin Apartments, and I was really sad about this because uh, you can go up the elevator in here and there's an accessible room that seems like an obvious place for corporate housing. You know, once you climb the ranks at Ryujin and are this uh, badass uh, corporate operative. However, there is nothing in the quest line that opens this up as housing. And I found out that it's actually just a room you'll access at some point during Sam Coe's affinity quest line. Uh, so that is a bit of a bummer, but just didn't want you to get your hopes up uh, getting a dope corporate apartment as you're, uh, you know, doing all this work for Ryujin. I will say, however, that there is a cool little bonus reward at the very end of the region quest line that makes up for this a little bit. All right, so for this final section on quests, rather than walk through any of the quests, the main intent here is to show you where they all start and which ones lead into important quest chains with worthwhile rewards so that you can prioritize your efforts. There's also a couple brutal bugs that can completely stop quest progression that I will discuss and show you some potential solutions to resolve those to be able to complete these quest lines. In general, Neon is packed full of really cool quests with a lot of personality and honestly has quite an interesting story that I do recommend playing through at your own pace. Most of the missions are not combat related except the gang ones, so if you like the social and roleplay aspect of the game, I think you will really enjoy most of these. All right, so starting off with the main quest line in Neon, which is for Ryujin Industries. And this is basically corporate espionage. You are going to become a super badass corporate spy working for all these uber powerful intelligent women. The primary rewards available for progressing through the Ryujin quest line are the magazine access we mentioned earlier for the Battle Up Chem, which is on the executive suite and is not accessible until about six quests in. And this is the same time you'll also get the unique Ryujin suit, which has double the persuasion chance of other apparel. Other unique rewards that are easy to miss are the Ember unique weapon and the Datura unique ship that will be available during the Top Secrets quest, but you must make sure that when you're talking to Simon in Sidonia on Mars, you choose not to pay him or persuade him, and he will offer a side job to track down a mercenary he claims is hunting him. When you encounter this mercenary, if you persuade her, she will give you her gun Ember, but if you kill her, you will also gain access to her Class A ship, the Datura. The final rewards from the Ryujin quest line are actually incredibly powerful, one of them being the internal neuroamp granting a free point into the social skill manipulate, which allows you to directly influence the actions of other characters through mind control, basically. Additionally, right around the same time, you will get the operator suit. And this is just really powerful, really sick looking apparel that gives a super unique plus 25% stealth bonus. Now, once you complete the main quest line, you will gain access to the Ryujin mission board on the operations level, but there are a couple decisions to make during the quest line that will affect the way these quests on the board play out. So let's go over those now. So the main decision you're going to have to make is during the guilty parties quest. And the choice you make here at the very end of the quest will determine Imogene's fate, as well as if you'll be required to use stealth on future missions from the Ryujin mission board once you complete the main quest line. So if you side with Imogene, the normal Ryujin policies will stay in effect and they will encourage stealth and subterfuge and discourage murder in future mission board quests. If you want Imogene to still be around after the main storyline completes, make sure you profess her innocence to Dalton when you return with the slate. Now, if you choose to side with Alaru, her rise to power will change the company policies to make it so stealth is not required for future mission board quests and you can just go in guns blazing. 
Now during this same Guilty Parties quest, there is a pretty brutal slate bug that can completely halt quest progression, making it so you can't move on to the next quest with Ryujin, and this happened to me. So here's how you can avoid it altogether, and then I'll show you how you can fix it if you're already stuck on it without having a save to go back. So to avoid it altogether, when you go to talk to Bayou Fine. before you enter the Sayoka hideout, and he asks you for the favor, tell him to take it up with Dalton. This will make it so the Sayoka Syndicate is hostile when you enter the hideout, but you won't have to go loot the bugged slate. There's also just a lot of extra XP and loot and Sayoka apparel available if you just merc them all. Now, if you choose this option and tell Bayou to take it up with Dalton, it will also open up another quick side mission called Managing Assets from Masako after you complete the quest Key Ingredient because you now owe Bayou a favor. Now, this is a fairly quick mission and not a huge deal if you miss it by choosing the other option, uh, but just worth noting. Okay, so if you're already stuck on this slate quest without a save to go back and redo it, I found a great tip from Obsidian Gray on Reddit where you can spawn the slate in with this item code, 001EDF69. Now before you do this, you may want to install the Baka Achievement Enabler mod to make sure your save file doesn't get its achievements disabled due to a bug in the game. I haven't done any modding yet personally, but I believe the Baka Achievement Enabler requires the Starfield script extender to be installed first in order to work properly. And you can find both of these at nexusmods.com, and I will provide this link in the description. Last thing to mention on Guilty Parties, which I've already mentioned like four times, but we'll just really hammer it in here, is that if you want to steal anything from the Sayoka hideout, including the Epic Sword, the Syndicate Enforcer, make sure you do it before you begin the Guilty Parties quest, as the entire building besides the back room seems to reset when accepting the quest, and this will actually make the sword disappear. All right, so a few things to note real quick on the key ingredient quest. And the first one is that the quest will eventually lead you to the clinic. So for max efficiency, you'll want to grab the side quest from Dr. Joseph Manning in the Reliant Medical Building right next to the Volai Hotel in Neon. And he will give you a quest to get some medical supplies from his contact at the clinic. So you can just bang that out at the same time you are doing the key ingredient quest. Okay, so that's basically everything that I can think of related to the Ryujin quest line that will help you uh, complete it successfully and overcome any bugs you encounter. So the second most important quest chain available in Neon is the Aurora quest line, uh, which is basically the blend partnership with Yannick Legrand in Legrand's Liquor. And the primary reward you will gain from this is the ability to create the drug Aurora yourself. And so this will start with Yannick's contact getting pinched at the security checkpoint right when you enter Neon from the spaceport, and then you will have to go over to the security building and talk to him in his cell, and he will have you go speak with Yannick, which kicks off the quest chain. The third and final major quest line in Neon is the gang quest line with the Strikers. And again, this starts uh, right when you enter Ebside, right by Madame Savages from a gentleman named Digger Zaman, and he will give you the quest, the audition, which will be to go into Madame Savages and speak with members of the Strikers. The main quest rewards you will obtain from this are the Strikers gang outfit we mentioned in the apparel section, access to the Strikers vendor up on the third floor of Madame Savages, and the unique Kraken automatic pistol called the Street Sweeper. Now there's also a very brutal bug with this quest that I encountered as well, where the door leading up to the Strikers room on the third floor uh, somehow becomes locked again after it was opened for you. And there's no way to just walk up and reopen it because it's supposed to already be open. And I actually had to Google this one, but I found a really dope video uh, by someone named Michello where they showed that you can use the manipulate skill that you get from the Ryujin quest line to have Andrea, the striker woman downstairs, actually walk upstairs and open the door again for you. And this is just really rad and creative. And so big props to them for figuring this out and posting a quick video on it. I will also link that video in the description. So if this was useful to you, I encourage you to click on that real quick and give it a view and a like to show them some love. Now, if you're not wanting to go that deep into the Ryujin quest line before finishing the gang quest line, the other way you could overcome this one is to use the no clip command in the console. And again, if you're going to do this, you'll really want to download that Baka achievement enabler and you'll need the Starfield script extender uh, for the Baka achievement enabler to work that I mentioned on the previous quest bug during the region line. And both of these are available from nexusmods.com, which is linked in the description. But the reason you'll want to install the Baka achievement enabler is so that the achievements on your save file do not get disabled because of a developer bug in the game. 
quests. All right, so there's actually a fuckload of other side quests here, and rather than go through each one, I'm just going to show a screenshot here of the map, which shows the location where each of these side quests start with these little yellow triangles. Again, feel free to pause here and take a screenshot so that you can reference this as you travel about the city. There are also a couple hidden activity quests that are easily missed that can be acquired from interacting with a couple specific objects. So the first is at the computer to the back left of the R&D floor in the Ryujin Tower. And once you access the computer, you'll have to click on the second document called Offsite Calibration Malfunction in order to activate it. The second hidden activity we mentioned already, and this is from the book in Bayou's penthouse on his desk called The Price of Destiny. Finally, there are a few other quest lines that start outside of Neon that will bring you through the city at various points, and I have not completed these personally, but they are Sam Coe's Affinity quest line, as well as the Crimson Fleet pirate quest line. Boom, we did it. Fuck, man. This was a long one. <laughs> this one took me a long time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like a long time. Oh, man. I really hope that was useful to you. Uh, I hope you get a lot of value out of it. And my intent really is to make your journey through Neon much more enjoyable and sort of immersive because you can forget about uh, trying to find anything or missing anything or worrying about important decisions. And you can really just know for sure that you're going to get all the cool rewards you want and let yourself enjoy the story and get immersed in the beauty of this really intense city. So... Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.